Hello, Dr. Vicki Peterson here. I want to talk to you about sleep and the risk of diabetes. And it's, it's pretty interesting what happens, and there's been really a great deal of studies done, probably starting in the 1990s on this. Uh, so it's, it's not um, really up for discussion whether less sleep is associated with a higher risk for diabetes, but I think it's certainly helpful to understand why and what's happening uh, specifically, which will hopefully then translate into everyone understanding the importance of sleep. And there's many, many arguments to be made for good sleep, uh, and, and this is one. And considering that type 2 diabetes is so prevalent in our society, even in the pre-diabetic state, starting with our children, uh, which is why we had to change type 2 diabetes to the name type 2. It used to be called adult onset and we had to change the name because too many children, not yet adults, had it. In case you didn't know the backstory on that, it's a, not, a, not a very good backstory, but, but those are the facts. So uh, what's ha the, some of the stats. If you're sleeping less than seven hours per night, it increases your risk for type two diabetes. The sweet spot for sleep is eight, and that's what the research shows. Uh, they did an interesting study where for only a week, uh, they reduced sleep of participants in a study, and after just a week of reduced sleep, they were considered pre-diabetic, and they took optimally healthy people who had no incidence of any blood sugar problems in a single week of reduced sleep, and uh, now they were in the realm of if they had just gone to their doctor and had their uh, hemoglobin A1C and glucose measured, they would have been told they were pre-diabetic. So, shows you how quickly it can happen. So what should happen is you, you eat and your blood glucose rises and uh, your pancreas, there's a part of your pancreas called the beta cells, they make insulin. And what insulin does is it opens the channels for glucose in your cells and then the glucose rushes in and your cells get to eat, as it were. And then of course your um, circulating blood sugar in your blood goes down. Um, glucose goes down because the cells have have absorbed it. And um, this is the uh, what's called the disposition index, which is how easily and readily your cells are disposed to taking in glucose. And that's, that's what healthy is. Now, what happens with less sleep is two things that are very interesting, is that the beta cells of the pancreas, again, the cells that make the insulin, are no longer as sensitive to that um, message of look there's a lot of glucose you know because in a healthy person that oh look we just ate there's a lot of glucose um, makes the beta cells secrete insulin so again the channels can open insulin opens those channels glucose rushes into your cells and your cells eat so uh, one thing that happens with less sleep is that the beta cells are no longer um, uh, sensitive to that so they're not producing enough insulin. So glucose comes up, not enough insulin is produced, so of course then the, the full diminishment of glucose that should happen doesn't happen. On top of that, what happens in your cells, so you have the production of insulin, but then your cells themselves are less sensitive to the little bit of insulin that's coming their way. So it's really a double jeopardy. You're not producing enough insulin to pull down the glucose, and then the little insulin that you are producing, your cells are not sensitive to that message of open up the channel and let glucose in. So you're, you're catching it at both ends, unfortunately, and now you have high, steady glucose in your blood, which depending on the level is either pre-diabetic or diabetic. So um, that's the science of it. I think it's, it's pretty interesting that sleep is so very associated with this. And I'm doing a, a series of um, videos on sleep because we've been talking a lot about it right now as I'm taping this. We are hopefully toward the end of our COVID-19 pandemic, but we've been talking a lot about sleep as it relates to your immune system, and I did a video on that. But while I was in the arena of sleep, there's so many things I think that um, it's important for us to realize how sleep affects our health. And with type 2 diabetes, 
also being a risk for uh, decreased immune system, they, they all revolve around together. There's no way to sort of pull one thing out, like say, oh, sleep is hard on your immune system, and then not have it be hard on uh, your, your heart disease risk and your cancer risk and your diabetes risk. They all come together, um, which in a way sounds bad, but it really is good because the fact that they all kind of sink or swim together means that when you're doing the right thing for your body, you're, you're lessening your risk for all of these diseases you don't want to get. So that's the that's the good side of the coin. So if you are somebody who's diabetic and type 2 diabetic, which really is a disease of lifestyle, we just talked about sleep as being one issue, um, but what if you're a type 2 diabetic and you just have poor quality sleep, you're trying to sleep, but it's just poor quality, then definitely reach out because we're very good at handling the root cause of why your sleep is of poor quality. If you're a type 2 diabetic and you're really ready to make all of the lifestyle choices required to reverse type 2 diabetes, because it is a reversible disease in most cases, and also reach out because, again, it's something we specialize in. And if you're ready for some diet and lifestyle changes with a team holding your hand through those changes, then please reach out once again. So we're in Saratoga, California, uh, near San Jose, but we see people from all over the country. Uh, in just a few months, our Florida clinic will be opening in Clearwater, Florida. Uh, we've got a few months on that, but not uh, not too far, not too far out there. So uh, please give me a call. We can set up a phone consultation. The number is 408-733-0400. I'll talk to you soon.